It's Joe from Hacks and I'm back ready to attack another web app. We are back on Hack This Site and we're looking at basic mission number 10. If you don't know what hackthissite.org is, it's a website that allows you to test out your web application hacking skills and I highly recommend giving it a try, even if you just want to have a little poke and see what it's all about. So you can see I have already completed this level, but it's an interesting level, so I thought I'd make a video about it. And we do have a bit of information here. This time Sam used a more temporary and hidden approach to authenticating users. But he didn't think about whether or not those users knew their way around JavaScript. So when we log onto the page, all we get is a password submission box. And we can try various strings on this password box, but all we get is you are not authorized. I've tested various other special characters to see whether it's likely to be vulnerable to anything such as exclamation marks, quote symbols, greater than, less than symbols, single quotation marks. Usually if an application is vulnerable to something, you're likely to get some sort of error or a different response other than you are not authenticated or authorized. So he mentioned something about JavaScript on the uh, initial page. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our favorite web application testing tool, Burp Suite. Burp Suite is a web application proxy that allows you to intercept and modify requests from web applications. It's got a lot more features than that. You can use it to brute force things, but it's a great tool that I use every day in my job. It there is a free version called the Community Edition, but there are also subscription models that offer more features such as uh, attack types like simulate manual testing. But there are also word lists that it includes if you pay for the pro. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn intercept on and we're going to head back to our browser and we're just going to submit test. Then we're going to head back to Burp and see what's going on in the application. So you can see this is a post request to index.php and it's getting our password test, assigning it to the password parameter and submitting it. What you can also see though is there is cookies or there are cookies being set by the application. Cookies are little files that contain bits of information that can be used by the website to make decisions. One example is if you put an item in your shopping cart, then the, the web application can set a cookie in your browser that says that that item is in your shopping cart. So the next time you visit the application, the item will still be in your shopping cart. Cookies are also used for things like sessions. After a user has successfully authenticated against an application, the, browser, the application will set a session cookie in their browser. This means that if the user was to close their browser and reopen it and revisit the application, they would still be logged in because their session cookie is still within their browser. However, that could be considered bad security practice. Normally when a browser clears, uh, normally when the user closes the browser, the best practice is, is probably to clear the cookies. So as you can see, the one cookie that caught my eye is this level 10 authorized equals no. <laughs> the naming convention of the cookie is a bit on the nose and the value isn't encrypted. If you can see here, hack this site equals, and there's a string there, that's probably our session cookie. I'm assuming it is. Um, I haven't done enough to look into it to find out, but it's a string that doesn't make any sense. And that's the way cookies should be. You shouldn't be able to predict what the sessions are, because if your sessions start one, two, three, four, five, then you can probably assume that the next session cookie is going to be one two three four five six seven and that could allow a malicious actor to steal the next session once it's created if he can predict the sequence in which the sessions are going to be created in so as i said we can manipulate values in the 
Burp Sweet Proxy, all we have to do is change no to yes, and then we can click forward. You'll get a few more requests prop up, but all you have to do is forward those two. And then if we head back to the application, you should see that you have a congratulations, you have completed basic 10. So what's going on here is that Sam is using cookies for authentication. As I said, cookies can be used for sessions to tell the application that the user is to remain logged in. That way, you know, the user isn't being logged out all the time. But to actually use a cookie for authentication is bad. The user should submit a password first before they are given a session. And all cookies as well, they shouldn't be something as simple as yes or no. They should be unpredictable, unsequenceable. They should be obfuscated, essentially. But yeah, that's that for you. That's all I have. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up and possibly subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. Please hang up and try again.